Alrighty, let's go over the PTR changes. Uh, I'm honestly a bit late uh, on these. These I should have recorded this like last week. Uh, I just kind of got caught up doing a bunch of random stuff, uh, focusing on this, that, and the other thing, and just honestly didn't sit down and just do it. Uh, and with the potential Tuesday PTR notes release, uh, last week they released them Tuesday. Mm, it's probably good to just do them now uh, before they release new notes, so let's do that. Throne of the Tides changes, adjusted a bunch of stuff, uh, adjusted Everbloom. Um... A lot of this kind of a lot of these kind of changes I don't really cover because I don't have people to play on the PTR with, and they're generally never complete. Uh, so I don't really can't really talk about this. Uh, the Demon Hunter changes. Let's go over them. Moved a bunch of talents. All right, cool. New talent champion the Glaive. Their Glaive is two charges and ten yards increased range. So there was a talent for base Demon Hunter that was just their Glaive is two charges. Now it has increased range, which is nice. Uh, they just completely killed and removed fodder uh, from the tree. Uh, one thing that I'm not sure what they're planning on doing, because removing fodder removes a 14 second, if how they wanted it to work, where Spectral Sight had a one minute cooldown and fodder, um, and fodder could pop on its own, but generally you could force it, which means that you'd have a 14, about a 15 second window every 10 every minute guaranteed for a fodder window that is and you'd generally feed that into your essence break window so it's a decent the one thing i'm kind of concerned about is i'm not sure about dh's current power uh previous to this but it but removing a 20 percent damage amp can be fairly significant so maybe they may need to make adjustments to the base kit uh because of that but we will see. Maybe it'll be completely fine with the other changes they've had. But fodder has just been generally kind of a weird, in a weird spot. Uh, it's always been kind of problematic. And if you try, and I, even with a mouse over macro uh, to try and kill the fodder demon, at the same time, if you hit the fodder demon with your uh, throw glaive, you're also doing less damage on subsequent, subse subsequent? Maybe that's the right word. Basically, obviously, when you hit a target and you hit the other targets, the other targets take less damage. And if you're throwing Glaive at the Demon and you're running Soul Rend and next tier, Soul Rend is going to be, or well, I guess now with the renamed Soul Scar, is going to be a fairly large part of your damage, most likely. Having your first Glaive hit going into a Demon uh, kind of sucks. So now you're not losing a hit on a mob. Now it procs with I beam, uh, or if I used to proc with I beam, now it's just gone. So with that twenty percent damage amp removed, uh, they might need to adjust some things. But it's way easier to adjust numbers than keep trying to work around a talent that also at a one minute cooldown uh, did not always fully fit into your forty five second your forty forty five second windows with essence break. So you, sometimes you may like hold it. I don't know. It's weird. I'm kind of glad they removed fodder. It was a very weird talent. I like the idea, but I just don't think it was working out the way they wanted it to. Uh, Chaos Nova base reduced and Fury costs reduced. Nice, nice, nice. It's always nice to have that. Uh, concentrated sigils, precise sigils, increased duration, no longer increased duration. Uh, these are changes mainly focused towards Vengeance because Vengeance is getting a lot more sigils. And having all of these increased durations on top of all of these new sigil stuff that they're getting would just be way too overpowered and overblown. So those are getting chopped down. Um, and this is, I think it's on like a 10 second cooldown. Uh, if you parry an attack, you get 4% health, which over time through a key will probably be pretty good. It's not something that you're going to go, oh man, I'm glad I parried and got that health. It's just going to be, oh, you know, it's it's just consistent throughput, which is nice. Um Crit chance bonus reduced for initiative. That's fine. Uh, one thing that I think this does slightly, if it works with our crit damage to crit damage bonus passive, this is a this is the slightest of nerfs. So this this isn't really much. Not nothing to worry about here. Um, a lot of towns change locations are combined to make the tree flow better. They capped felt barrage. Um, the Fury cost per volley has been reduced, and the damage per volley has been reduced. 
But I think Fel isn't Fel Barrage on a. I believe Fel Barrage is on like a one minute cooldown. So now you're going to get a cooldown used every one minute for eight seconds, which uh, feels kind of weird, I think. Let me just double check it. Did they make it a choice node or is it the bottom? Because it was a capstone. It was, yeah, there it is. One and a half minute cooldown. Eight seconds. <laughs> I don't know if I like that. Because they nerfed it. They nerfed its overall and nerfed the damage. I don't know. I, Fel Barrage isn't something that's even really interesting to me. I've never really liked that kind of Breath of Sindragosa keep up. X thing kind of play style, or just try and use all of your resource for this AOE thing. I don't. I, I've never really liked it. I, I I hope it's not that great. If it's good, you'll have to play it. But I don't. I've never been interested. Uh, they redesigned this for the two set. Blade Dance consumes a charge of throw glaive to fight your primary target for 100% chance or 100% damage, and each slash has a chance to throw another glaive for 35% damage. This is going to be really nice, mainly because now it solves the problem of you having to hit the throw glaive button in single target. Uh, because hitting the throw glaive button most of the time kind of sucks, actually. Now, the main problem that I... I think I got this take from Max, because he was talking about it when I was watching his stream, was that now it fixes that gameplay issue. But once the tier set is gone, how are they going to fix throw glaive being annoying to press? which they're probably just going to have to make this thing like one of these talents, like maybe even build it, bake it into the soul scar after this tier set is over that your blade dance throws a glaive, which would just be really nice. So four set has been updated. Throw glaive reduced the remaining cooldown of the hunt and the hunt's damage over time increased. Okay. Uh, vengeance changes, change talents. Increased damage, increased damage. Throw glaive is nice because it gives them more snap threat. Calcified Spikes now provides this benefit when it's refreshed and in two addition when it expires. What Calcified Spikes is, is as soon as Demon Spikes ends, you gain a 12% uh, damage reduction. So you're not instantly going to lose your DR and then get exploded. Uh, but what people were doing, because it now says you cannot cancel it, is what you could put a, you could bake a, um, a macro into demon spikes to where when you can't you would cancel demon spikes and then recast it meaning you get the demon spikes and the calcified spikes benefit on top of each other which was a lot of dr and was pretty good but now it kind of this is kind of nice because it just it's a slight nerf to skill expression but does make the gameplay a lot less uh annoying in terms of what you actually had to do Meteoric Strikes reduced the cooldown of Infernal Strike by 10 seconds was 8. I think that's just their movement ability. Um, reduces Magic Station buff. He's to Souls healing buff. Well, I don't know what Bulk Extraction is. Soul Barrier Absorb value is increased. Fire Demise now increases your damage. Delta enemies effect by Fire Brand by 50%. I mean, it's just it, this is just like a single target thing. But also just having extra damage on your DR is nice. Now increase the soul cleave damage to primary targets. By 50 was 40. So just, just little buffs all around for Vengeance. Maybe that wasn't in the spot they feel like. Uh, just lat buffs for Druid. Or for Balanced Druid. Uh, I don't know enough about Tank to talk about the Guardian set. So just extra damage. Apparently Druid's been seeming pretty good. Uh, one thing that was been talked about. Apparently there's the Council boss. That is like the three bosses. Um, the druids are good against, but that's also because there's you you can only hit two of them. Like you can only stack and hit two of them or something weird. I haven't actually looked at the fight, so I'm I'm not really sure I can say. But um the uh, fight sounds weird. And they were talking about balance maybe being good, but it's hard to tell with PTR because they don't really do balance changes until a bit later. Big, big, big. Here are the big notes. Augmentation changes. Uh, our goal with these changes is to reduce the power of stacking as many augmentation buffs on the same four targets and raid scenarios. We want to support having multiple augmentations in the raid, but prevent them from being required to do max damage and forcing these buffs to spread themselves out should still be viable. 
These changes are very, very good. You've probably heard them. You've seen them talked about them already. Uh, it essentially prioritizes Ebon Mites onto targets that have less than two of them. It prioritizes Prescience on classes that do not have Prescience. And the uh, Shifting Sands is only now prefers an ally who does not already have it. But basically what this is doing is it's reducing... It's essentially really hurting the degenerate gameplay uh, that was allowing people to majorly buff stack uh, with augmentation and was one of the reasons why augmentation was seen as kind of pretty negative in the mythic community at least just because hey four of these is incredible and people knew they were going to get nerfed um but tuning like this obviously would make players that enjoy this kind of support play style way happier uh, because now it's like your class isn't getting completely gutted until they can fix it. They're actually actively uh, fixing it and making it better as a whole while still nerfing your overall throughput. So I think that's a very good change. Uh, this doesn't really change much of anything for their dominance in Mythic Plus, uh, which might still be a significant problem. And that's primarily due to their defensive capability for a five-man party. Um, the, I think their utility is something that, while well, yeah, their support class is really going to need to get looked at. Otherwise, they're going to essentially be a shoe in all the time uh, for difficult content. Because one thing you can even do with, even if you're buffing somebody with an ebb and might, but you're not buffing them, yeah, they're getting damaged, but you might even be buffing people with ebb and might if they're weak and they need a little extra health depending on the damage instance that you're dealing with. Because of Black Attunement and how much extra health they give, that might be enough to keep somebody alive. So uh, it does provide additional utility, which is nice. And having that basically utility role is really cool in the game. Uh, but I still think that their defensive capabilities are far too significant uh, for what they should be. It really needs to be looked at for five-man content. And I think the, uh, how do I want to finish my thoughts on, I do want the class to be worth playing. I just don't want it to be meta based on what they want it to be. Uh, that might be kind of a weird mindset to have. Um, I will admit the mindset is somewhat gatekeepy, but I do believe that effort equal, should equal reward in all scenarios. And while you are in a, especially in a raid environment, uh, effort does equal reward. You can buff people at certain times, learn their, learn their cooldown windows, and then you can actually be pretty efficient at just buffing different people at different times during the raid. And maybe you do a job where you buff somebody so they have extra health, something like that. That I'm totally cool with. I'm honestly just still very worried about their potential prevalence in five mans as someone who likes to do. Um, I like to do Mythic Plus content, but when things like Augmentation Evoker are so s disgustingly strong, uh, you essentially A, remove a DPS slot, and then almost B, with how it works, force the other two classes to need to really interact well with each other, which is why Shadow Priest and Fire Mage uh, really shown there. So... But I do like these changes. These are a great direction. And I'm, like I said, I'm glad they're not just completely destroying the class and hamstringing it until they feel like they have time to fix it. They're actively putting the work in. It's good. A uh, hunter, uh, beast mastery bonus pets from Call of the Wild now spawn on top of your target rather than by your side. This is actually pretty big. Um, I recently started playing my hunter quite a bit. I haven't played much uh, survival, but I played beast mastery and MM a decent amount. And the amount of time it takes from your, like, for example, if you're spawning a Dire Beast from the 20 second cooldown, it spawns at you, it runs to the target, and you could lose almost 10% of, of that Dire Beast of it just getting to the target, even though it has Sprint and whatever. It might look aesthetically cool, but I think there's also another thing where your Dire Beast and shit are just sp a change where they're just spawning on the target instead of on you, and I think that's way, way better. And I'm glad they did that. New empowerment buff from Coordinate Assault, now that's five, was three. I think any of these buffs that they give you, um, that have it that give you a damage window, 
I honestly would rather all of these be nerfed slightly and then have an extended window, kind of like how they did with Momentum. Because very, very short windows, especially on fights that might require flexibility, can either make or break uh, how decent you can perform on a class and might make you not play that class altogether just because of that. Does That does not generally happen, mind you. Uh, but if it can, and sometimes does, it feels like shit. Let's see. Mage. Not I, I don't know. Mage. Don't look at mage. Don't look at monk. Um, I know this was capped at 100% value. I guess it was uncapped, but it was just a slight nerf, I suppose. I don't know. Shadow Priest. Uh, they're just making Insanguinate passive. Thank God. Uh, the act one was kind of cringe. And Venom increase, King's Bane increase. Uh, these changes are actually big, not only for Assassination and Sub. Um, replicating Shadows and Indiscriminate Carnage. Secondary targets now prioritize enemies that are not affected by Garrow and Rupture. And now you can actually, instead of having to tab target and hoping that the target you're hitting is also adjacent to another target that doesn't have your cleave, now if you have a priority target, you can actually keep cleaving your shit off the priority target. Uh, if you want to have a little increased skill cap, you can try and manually put your bleeds on targets in different spots of the pack to try and make sure or spread them as quick as possible and as efficiently as possible. But now this also helps just the general gameplay of, hey man, I'm hitting this target, this is my prio, and now my shit's just spreading to everything else and I don't have to worry too much about it. Uh, so that's very, very nice. Um, Outlaw, I haven't looked too much into Outlaw. I listened to, um, I listened to JPC talk about it a little bit. I think one of these changes was what you could do is if you got the cooldown reduction of roll the bones, you could wait till everything falls off. And then because of the, how the set bonus work, if you just rolled, roll the bones, you would guarantee that you just keep that cooldown reduction all the time. And it was super, super strong. I think this goes to counteract that, um, which is good. I do. I did like the idea of basically, hey, man, uh, the buff you really want, you're able to always get. But now it adds, a, I guess it just adds that little more RNG into it. Um, I've never been a fan of a bunch of RNG, so I've never really played Outlaw that much. It's not been my favorite. I've always stuck to, I've always really played Sub. I need to practice Assassination to really know how this class is. Because um, I've only ever really played Sub since it's pretty simple. So that is, that's a nice change uh, for this. Well, it probably definitely affects their overall power, and they probably don't want to hit this thing with the nerf bat too, too hard until they've kind of, it plays the way they want to, right? So they're making these changes. They'll see how it performs, and then they'll, they'll mess with it again. Um, nerf to the Primordial Wave Lava Burst set, Chain Healing Increase, uh, a bunch of Demo changes... I don't play a demo, so I didn't say it, tell ya. I hope the buffs are good. I hope the warlocks are happy. They always have a raid spot. Uh, and now we get to the depressing, for me at least, uh, warrior arms. All ability damage increased by 6%. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting like fucking best season ever. Kind of feeling out of this shit. Um... I guess I'll talk about that after, uh, but then we have Protection. Consuming Thunderous Sword now deals 100% of remaining damage. This was a good change. Uh, one of the things with the set bonus they did is it was it did 40% of all of the remaining bleed damage because you're reapplying it anyway, so it's like, okay, it's just a like, little extra damage on top, but losing a minute or a minute and a half cooldown and only getting 40% of the value because you're consuming the bleeds on the target kind of sucked ass. Uh, so they're just changing that to be like, hey, Thunder Swore, you're not losing any value there. Good uh, for prop. Um, but Warrior is, I will talk about it every time because it's important to me. Uh, Warrior is in a very, very weird state, um, in a very kind of bad state uh, for DPS. I'm not sure of their exact numbers because I don't care about numbers. The way they've been balancing, it will be good enough to play and I will always be playing it. So that's fine. Um, but ARMS has a distinct issue where 
Rage isn't really a resource anymore uh, because we have so many good talents that keep buffing overpower to the point where it's more valuable to keep just pressing overpower most of the time, um, at least at two stacks, even sometimes an execute window, than it is to try and manage your rage within a Colossus smash window to get your test of might stacks high enough for that extra strength bonus. So it's kind of weird. Um, I don't... No, maybe they think it'll be too strong with especially with the legendary coming up. I don't know what even we don't even know what the legendary does, but arms just has a significant rage economy issue and it just honestly feels bad to ignore the rage bar. It's kind of like what happened with Fury at the beginning of Vault, where you just ignored your rage bar, you would hit rampage, crushing bow, crushing blow, and you would do that until the boss died. Um It was very weird, it was kind of shitty. Honestly, I mean, I didn't really mind it too much, but it goes it really went against what they wanted. Um, so with arms, we just don't have a spender. Um, we're using things like Ignore Pain. We're using things like Whirlwind. They nerfed the Ignore Pain interaction. Uh, we might still be using Ignore Pain because Ignore Pain can still proc Tactician as technically a DPS increase, I think. But... We're probably still going to be running. We're going to be running the uh, field by violence, although the on-demand defensiveness of the uh, ignore pain is pretty nice. So we'll see which one's more worth it to run during the raid. But because we have no good rage spender, uh, I really hope they just give us something that is spammable and does decent damage. Um, focused rage, heroic strike. Um, if they buffed the talent in the, they buffed the slam talent specifically in the arm tree, arms tree on the left side. And I'll show you real quick. Uh, the main reason why I don't think they should buff this talent for slam specifically is because it's a general change instead of a arm specific change and it's arms that really needs this. Uh, I really think they need to... They can either increase the crit damage or and the crit chance a little bit, or maybe just have it do flat damage more. I'm not sure. But improved slam, even as one point, should increase the amount of rage spent by slam by like 20. Uh, making this button... I mean, you could even make it do 10, so it's at 40 at least. Um, the main problem is we're just... We just don't... Our globals don't spend good rage. We just don't have a good rage spender in Colossus Smash. So I think buffing improves slam to like 50... Rage with adding plus 20 rage cost on this, I think would be really good. Uh, but maybe they're happy with where it's at, even though it's functionally working against itself. I just wish the class kind of flowed a little better and kind of worked with itself way more than it does uh, against itself currently. With how even in your Colossus Smash windows, even though you're running Test of Might sometimes, it's still worth more worthwhile to instead of pushing a 30 damage or a 30 rage slam or a 30 rage rend it's more worthwhile to hit overpower which costs no rage and is free in a uh, test of might window so i really hope they fix that and fury has some systemic fucking problems the game plays the numbers seem decent but the game plays pretty fucking terrible <coughs> currently so here i need a drink of water i've been talking a lot Just enough to give me by, but Fury needs God right now. It is in a very, very bad state. Uh, I really don't like. I, I like that they're going with Odin's Fury, but I really don't like that the fet set is focused around Bloodthirst once again, uh, because it forces us into a couple towns which kind of suck ass. Um, don't feel that great. Uh, the Reckless Abandon play style where you would Rampage, Bloodthirst, Bloodthirst, BT, while simple and effective, I actually way prefer that to how it plays now, where Bloodthirst has a full cooldown inside the Reckless Abandon window, which is kind of... I don't like it, man. It just feels like it flows bad uh, to me. I just, I just really, really don't like it. Because now that BT and Rampage aren't our primary buttons... Now we have BT talents because the set's about BT, but now we need to use uh, ramp or 
now we maybe what are we going to use annihilator maybe so are we whirlwinding are we slamming even though slams still a terrible button are we excuse me are we if we're running a non annihilator later build <sighs> annihilator are right, if we're running a non annihilator build are we hitting raging blow without good raging blow talents on top of because we don't have enough talent points because we're having to spec into all this bloodthirst shit now we have the bloodthirst shit and now we need raging blow now it's it just doesn't work well man it just it's so it's a problem it's so annoying um i would honestly rather they do something like i don't know just scrap the bloodthirst shit in it and just make it be like hey it's Odin's Fury centric. Now your rampage gives you. Now your rampage does like I don't know. Your next couple, your next couple rampages guarantees crit, and whenever you have crit, have a crit rampage hit, it reduces the cooldown by a second or two every time of Odin's Fury. Yay! I I don't know, man. Just if it's so weird to me how Fury Warrior throughout the years, especially coming from Classic, uh, has always been Bloodthirst is the button. It is the good button, just the cool button. Fury Warrior, Bloodthirst. It, during later patches, obviously, Bloodthirst has been a button that we don't like pressing. But rather than forcing us to press Bloodthirst because it is a bad button, so you're making tier sets around pa making a button we don't have to press, why not just make Bloodthirst a longer cooldown, more worthwhile button to press, and stop making sets around it and make sets around other abilities or other interactions instead. Uh, because if they want Bloodthirst to be good, then they should change it so it's good um, instead of making sets to force you to press it. I'm not really a fan of them. Like, changing the gameplay style of things is fine, uh, but when you... But I guess it's just a problem of having two tier sets in a row that are like, hey, press Bloodthirst. And we're like, kind of, we, we just did. Do it again. And the only reason I believe that the set bonus is focused around Bloodthirst is because the four set bonus is focused around Odin's Fury. And they wanted Odin's Fury to be the real button that we are pressing to change up our gameplay. But because the left side, once again, the left side of the Fury tree is so problematic... They had to just make it about bloodthirst because half the fucking shit in the left side of the tree is about bloodthirst alone by itself. I'll, I'll fucking show you. Here we go, warrior, fury. Oh, cool. Two dead talents. Bloodthirst, 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 bloodthirst. So, and they're, so they're for forcing us to go to Odin's Fury, right? And all of these are buffing either rampage or are just more um raging blow talent right so to make us run an odin's fury set we have to run bloodthirst because we have to go here to fucking get it to get to it efficiently and because four out of the six talents are bloodthirst and these two talents are dog shit we're forced to just run bloodthirst because they want odin's fury if they just literally, I mean, fuck, dude, literally, once again, make single-minded Fury a passive for Fury. So if people want it, they can take it, and they can shut the fuck up about it. But remove these two completely dog shit talents, get them out of the fucking game, maybe put some slams-centric talents here. Maybe, I don't know if you want more Raging Blow talents, you have Raging Blow stuff here, but if you put like some Slam or even better damage Whirlwind centric talents, like what if you gave Whirlwind a Bleed talent here, or maybe Slam Bled its primary target, which could be splashed with Whirlwind, and then you could put these here, and then, oh cool, well now you have something buffing your Annihilator, and you don't have to be specific to Bloodthirst, you can change it around, right? Just... These two talents are hamstringing the entire left side of the tree. The entire left side of the tree is just dead because of these. There's no variety. There's no variance. It's all bloodthirst all the way down. They just, please, just, they, our dev needs to get unmarried to these. This needs to get thrown in the fucking trash. 
please, please, God. If, I, I don't care what they put here. It it will be better because it might have some kind of useful. If like if there's two talents here and both of them say Fury gets negative 100% haste on both of them, I'd rather take both of those talents than take these ever. So please, for the love of God, please fix these. Also, one thing weird. Uh, I don't like that spec trees at their entry give you your primary ability as a talent point. I feel like every class spec tree in the game should just get their primary ability as their specialization and then not have to talent into it. The first talent point shouldn't be bloodthirst. The first talent point should be raging blow. Uh, thank you for coming to my TED talk. Bye-bye.